So the title basically explains what this video is about, but I want to make clear that I'm not saying these are end game horns you should use or should not be using throughout Iceborne. This is more for people just getting into Iceborne, whether you're a brand new or returning player, or you might be a veteran hunter that's ready to come over to the dark side that is the hunting horn. We welcome you with open arms. I wanted to talk about something I received a comment about too. The commenter recommended that I don't use the camera style that I do and don't think that I'm calling them out in a bad way. I'm always, always, always up for constructive criticism and dialogue. The reason that I use the camera though is because I'm a C5 to C7 quadriplegic so I don't have any use of my fingers so doing things like moving, turning, and attacking, doing stuff like that simultaneously might be easy for most but it's pretty much near impossible for me. So having the camera locked and moving and focused helps me out tremendously. The first horn I'm going to talk about is the Queen's Flute 2. This horn has had my back for a while in Monster Hunter World and it's one that I used vigorously alongside Teostra's horn. Status hammers have benefited from the hunting horn's new attack in which you spin the horn. Rapid succession hits that can be used in a pretty quick succession. This horn has a generous level 4 and level 1 slot distribution. Along with that, it has a solid chunk of white sharpness to dish out some pretty good damage. The songs that should be highlighted on this one are Stamina Use Reduced and Max Stam Plus Recovery songs. These are pretty much a staple if you want to do some heavy damage. You combine that with the fact it can paralyze and you have a combo that can result in some pretty damn good burst damage with that attack that we just mentioned before. Not to mention that this is also one of the most unique and beautiful looking horns in the game and it's actually pretty easy to rank all the way up to rarity 11. Next, we'll talk about the Lumu Drone. I know a lot of people like using elementalist weapons, so I thought putting this one on here would be a good idea for those that like to use those elementalist builds and crank out some damage. The raw damage of it isn't exactly crazy, but it gets the job done in early master rank fights. It has a level three and level one slot, so it doesn't really destroy your build. Just toss that elementalist gem in and get to smashing. It comes with a decent chunk of white sharpness and even a 10% affinity head start for you crit lovers. Max stamina recovery and reduced stamina use are both on this one, but it even throws in speed burst plus evasion window in there for some extra utility. Even though this is kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum as far as how good the horn looks, Go ahead and get this one built early and roll your way to victory. In a similar fashion to the Lumu line, uh, the Kulu line is very accessible at the beginning. It has very similar draws to the Lumu horn. The song selection is identical, but it has a couple differences. The differences are that obviously the Kulu horn has less raw damage. But the bigger thing is the fact that it doesn't have any slots, so you might have to get a little bit creative with your build if you want to use this as an elementalist weapon. I look at these two as kind of like a 2A, 2B kind of thing, so it's more about your preferences when it comes to which horn you go after. But sadly, I don't have any footage of the Kulu horn because I'm working on the horn lines that are underneath it. The last horn I want to talk about is the NYX aka Nightshade Lumu line. When talking in terms of personal utility, this is the clear hammer to get. It probably has the most game changing song in all ailments negated. That's poison, sleep, paralysis, stun, blast buildups, you name it. I just used this thing, even in its lower ranked version, and took out Black Veil Val Hazak with no problem whatsoever. Look at this. This is one of my favorite moves to pull when using this hammer. I pull the monster over to a status ailment afflicting area 
I sit in it and I watch them get poisoned, paralyzed, whatever it may be. There are so many ailment inflicting monsters in Iceborne and they actually do some pretty serious damage when you get hit by them or you get set up to get damaged heavily. Outside of that awesome utility, it comes in with a very generous chunk of white sharpness, a level 2 slot, and a nice bit of sleep damage which is fantastic to set up yourself or even the team to bomb the hell out of a monster. I do recommend that you put crafting a mega barrel bomb on your radio menu because you're going to be putting the monster asleep a time or two during the fight and whether you cart or just head back to camp, stock yourself up with explosive materials to make those bombs and fully take advantage of that sleeping monster. That's going to be all for uh, this video. It was a little bit of a quicker one, but I wanted to get it out while people are going to be starting fresh in Iceborne. I'm going to be diving deep into Iceborne and working my way to Endgame, so please be patient with me and stay tuned for builds and similar videos to this. With that being said, please do like, comment, and subscribe to help me out. Have a good night, and happy hunting.